Hi, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Alan Hunter, also known as Polite Leader, did a video a couple of years ago on Stephen Furtick and his church, Elevation Church, in Charlotte, North Carolina, supposedly exposing their false doctrine. So today, we're going to examine that video and expose Alan Hunter. First of all, in case you're not familiar with him, Alan is a Calvinist and a cessationist who sings the praises of the likes of Justin Peters and John MacArthur. Knowing that will help you to understand where he's coming from in his commentary. Now, in this first clip, Alan says that the statement of faith on Elevation's website seems okay, but this is due to file cabinet theology. Taking a cursory glance at the beliefs listed on their website, Christians would hardly find anything wrong with many of the statements. However, as a result of file cabinet theology, there is a darker side to Elevation. File cabinet theology is a way of saying that the ministry statement of faith is merely a cover for people who promote heresy. Now maybe there's some merit to that theory, but then again, maybe it's just a device to justify attacking people you disagree with when they clearly affirm all of the essentials of the faith, as Elevation Church does. Maybe their statement of faith is what they truly believe, and the examples of where you feel that they violate those doctrines are simply misunderstandings. Maybe, instead of defaulting to condemnation mode, you should do the biblical thing and go to them and seek clarification before calling them heretics. Just a thought. In this clip, Alan says that Stephen Furtick should consider what his elder, John MacArthur, says about him being unqualified for ministry. When Dr. MacArthur was asked his opinion about Stephen Furtick, Pastor John's short reply was, unqualified. Rather than self-reflecting upon a senior elder's opinion of himself, Furtick took tremendous pride in this criticism and based the title of his book upon Pastor MacArthur's single word remark. Well, first of all, Johnny Mac is a Calvinist and Stephen Furtick isn't. He's in no way accountable to John MacArthur and has no obligation to receive any rebuke from him. Secondly, Stephen Furtick has the same level of education that John MacArthur has, a Master's of Divinity. Despite the fact that many refer to Johnny Mac as Dr. MacArthur, his highest earned degree is an MDiv. He got his from Biola's Talbot Theological Seminary and Stephen Furtick got his from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. So it's going to be hard to make the case that Stephen Furtick is any less qualified for ministry than Johnny Mac was after 10 years of pastoring Grace Community Church. And I love how he flipped that jab from Johnny Mac and turned it into a book that made the bestseller list for the USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Publishers Weekly, and the Washington Post. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. In this next clip, Alan says that it's heresy to say that Jesus can't override your unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do, one thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. That's heresy. In Daniel 4, 34 and 35, Yahweh's dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth. And no one can ward off his hand or say to him, what have you done? And in John 6, 44, Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. The unbelief of man can in no way thwart God's divine decree. Rather, as Proverbs 16, 4 teaches, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Furtick was referring to Matthew 13, 58 here, where it says that Jesus could do no mighty work in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Alan quotes verses about God doing as he pleases, but he doesn't bother to explain to you the theological issue in play here. Stephen Furtick wasn't saying that Jesus didn't have the power to override human will. He was saying that his divine character prevents him from doing so, because God created man as a free moral agent. The Bible says that it's impossible for God to lie, Hebrews 6.18. God has the power to lie, but he doesn't have the character to lie, because his essence is truth. In the same way, God may have the power to override the human will, but it would be against his divine character to do so and violate the free will that he gave us. The verses that Alan quotes have nothing to do with how God honors free will. Instead, he seems to be saying that God can decree man's choices, which in effect turns man into a moist robot or marionette puppet. 
Now, being a Calvinist, Allen would naturally have a different understanding of free will than a non-Calvinist, and thus the knee-jerk cry of heresy at Stephen Furtick's statement. But there's nothing heretical about saying what the Bible clearly says, that Jesus could not do any mighty work in Nazareth. God can't override our free will any more than he can tell a lie, because his divine character prevents him from doing so. In this next clip, Alan comments on Stephen Furtick squirting people with a super soaker. Now this is called the drenchinator. I'm praying about whether to follow through on this illustration. And I hear the Lord say, yes! That's funny. I don't see anything in here about how the teaching elder is supposed to spray the congregation with a water gun. Furtick clearly wasn't being serious about God telling him to squirt people. But Alan apparently has such a theological stick up his hind parts that he can't allow for a little levity. His comment is basically a cessationist observation that God only speaks through his written word. So God couldn't possibly have told Stephen Furtick to pull that trigger. In this next clip, we have a good example of how people like Alan use out-of-context quotes to attack those with whom they disagree. If you know Jesus, I am sorry to break it to you. This church is not for you. Yeah, but I just gave my life to Christ last week at Elevation. Last week was the last week that Elevation Church existed for you. <sighs> More heresy. The church is first and foremost a community of believers, and in Acts 20:28, 20, Paul specifically instructs the church elders to be on guard for themselves and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers to shepherd the church of God. If you watch the whole clip, Furtick explains what he meant by that. You're in the army now. We do one thing. We preach Jesus so people far from God can know Jesus, and then we train them up so that others can know Jesus. It's called Kingdom Multiplication. It's what Elevation Church is all about. And over 500 people have given their lives to Jesus for the first time in this church in the last five months. That's over 100 per month. If that doesn't get you excited and you need the doctrines of grace as defined by John Calvin to excite you, you in the wrong church. Let me get a phone book. There are 720 churches in Charlotte. I'm sure we can find one where you can stuff your face until you're so obese spiritually that you can't even move. So he's saying that Elevation Church's focus is on evangelism. Once you're a believer, you need to hook up with the church's vision and participate in winning the lost rather than looking for the church to serve you. Of course, all churches need to care for their people, but all churches don't have the same vision. Some churches focus on expository teaching, like John MacArthur's does. Some churches, like Church on the Move in Tulsa, have a great ministry to kids. Church on the Move was founded by Willie George, also known as Gospel Bill, and their approach to outreach has always focused on bringing the whole family in through attracting the kids. Some churches focus on missions, some on caring for the homeless and inner city communities. Some focus on prayer, like International House of Prayer in Kansas City. Condemning Stephen Furtick as a heretic because he states his church's vision is just presumptuous and shallow. And leaving the whole quote out of his video is misleading. And then Alan goes on to tell us what the biblical model for church government is. Stephen Furtick is more or less a word faith preacher whose sermons are full of heresy. An elevation church, rather than having a plurality of elders, who themselves are under the authority of a presbytery or congregation like the New Testament outlines, employs a CEO type model where the single pastor possesses unquestionable power. But there is no consensus on the biblical structure of church government. In fact, the church primarily met in homes until the fourth century. So from that standpoint, most churches today are unbiblical, including John MacArthur's. Allen's comment about Stephen Furtick being word of faith is nonsense. Stephen Furtick isn't word of faith. He's not even a charismatic. He's a Baptist. But unlike a lot of Baptists, he's not so bogged down with dogma that he can't fellowship with people who don't believe like him on the non-essentials. Maybe that's one of the keys to his success. Maybe others could learn a thing or two from Stephen Furtick. Just a thought. 
And in this final clip, Alan gives us the best example of what I mean when I talk about covert Calvinism. If you're a fellow believer caught up with this organization, I strongly recommend that you try to find a solid Reformed church in your area so that you can accurately hear the true gospel preached week after week and be uplifted by others of like precious faith. He shows Dr. Michael Kruger from Reformed Theological Seminary in Charlotte telling people that they should leave Elevation Church and find a good Reformed church in that area. This is what these people do. For the most part, they don't evangelize, they proselytize. When was the last time you saw a Calvinist evangelistic crusade? Maybe on the mission field they focus on reaching the lost, but for the most part they don't do that. They convert the converted to Calvinism. Elevation Church goes after the lost. They take the gospel to heathens in their community. But what Calvinists do is they get people to think that they're listening to false teaching or heresy and then they tell them that they need to go to a church where they can get sound theology. But of course, they fail to mention the fact that they believe in predestination and that they don't believe that Jesus died for everybody. This is why so many people have moved away from charismatic churches to reformed churches in the 21st century. It's a formula of misrepresent, condemn, redirect, and indoctrinate. And with those who don't know what they're doing, it's been quite effective. That's why I'm doing videos like this, to expose their MO. When somebody tells you, that guy is teaching heresy, the first question you should ask is, is he giving me the proper context? Or is he taking the guy out of context? Going back to that reference to file cabinet theology at the start of the video, when a ministry provides you with a statement of faith, you have to assume that that's the more accurate representation of the ministry's beliefs. A statement of faith is done with planning and forethought and can be revised if necessary. When a speaker is addressing a crowd, it's easy to misspeak or leave yourself open to misinterpretation. You can't edit your comments like you can in a statement of faith. And people with no ethics can pounce on those missteps to brand you as a false teacher. When they tell you that the guy is a heretic, ask yourself, is this an essential doctrinal issue? Because if it's not, then it's not heresy, even if it is wrong. When they try to redirect you to a different church where you can get sound doctrine, ask yourself, what do they mean by sound doctrine? Don't they just mean their doctrine? Because everybody thinks that their doctrine is sound and the other guys isn't. And when they start to teach you things that don't sound right, don't just assume that they know more than you do, no matter how many degrees they have or how many books they've written. The Holy Spirit inside of you may be prompting you to get away when they tell you things like God predetermines everything and Jesus didn't die for everybody and the miraculous gifts of the Spirit have ceased. The tactics Alan Hunter used in this video are the best example I've seen of how covert Calvinism is done. Hopefully now you can recognize it and prevent yourself or others from falling for it. Thanks for watching and be blessed.